We're almost there. One film away from closing out the Fat Boys filmography. Jamie? Yeah. Let's go watch Crush Groove. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to another episode of Good Times Great Movies. We're an 80s movie podcast. Every other week, we watch a different movie from the 80s, and then we talk about it. That's right. I'm one of your two hosts. My name is Doug McCambridge, and with me, mm, do you want to rap? Do you want to say like... No, I want to tap my percussions like my that name hot is Sheila Jamie, e. and I'm here to say I love Fruity Pebbles in a major way. Hey. Hey, you're right. dropping my beats for me? Okay. Well, it was an old commercial that I used to watch a lot on Saturday mornings. <laughs> the bedrock yellow, orange, purple, lime, and red. But to get the fruity taste, I got a trick, Fred. I watched a lot of TV growing Wow, that was really good. You commercial. got more? You got more? Uh, no, I think no, because then Fred... Was that Barney rapping? It's Barney rapping. And then Fred repeats the rap and realizes that Barney's stealing his fruity pebbles. Does Dino end it with a whir, whir? I or don't know. That's I a Scooby Doo sound. I'm taking from the, the integrity yeah. of your fruity pebble rap. How dare you? <laughs> that was really good, though. I do vaguely remember that. And you, you, you really remember vaguely. That. I think about that at least once a month, which is <laughs> terrible. Is this when that once a month drink that you were talking about? Oh, maybe it is. Just <laughs> maybe that's when it, it kicks sit in. Sit with your beer right. and your fruity pebble rap to uh -huh. yourself. Yeah. No, I, I sang the um, uh, one of the uh, Honeycomb commercials once, and Carla was mortified that I knew every word to this dumb Honeycomb commercial. How's it go? I'm kind of interested. Honeycomb Honey. big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small. No, no, no. No, no, no. Honeycomb's got a big taste. I'm done. I can't. A big, big taste. <laughs> big, yeah. big Yeah. And then the big, honeycomb big would splash into the milk, right? Yeah. I mean, there were yeah. so many. There was one with Hulk Hogan. Again, I watched oh. a ton of, like, I watched so much TV growing up. I, this is not what the podcast is. It's not what the podcast is, but this kind of relates to the movie. Does it? Because these are sort of your rap skills. Your, well, there are other your people's musical rap skills. skills. Well, they're yeah, people's but... rap skills who have to write jingles for stupid kids on Saturday morning. Which were, are now, like, they are part of y you. They really, yeah, they really are. Yeah. But anyway, we're here to talk about <gasps> Crush, Groove, and My Oh My. This was a meeting old friends again that I hadn't yeah. seen in a long time. There were so many performances by so LL Cool J. What was that where he rapped for 10 seconds and we're like, yeah. dude, you're signed. You are, of course you're signed. he is. We want you. With that baby blue hat on? <laughs> Well, I want to sign him, too. I'll, as soon as he walked in, I said, oh, my God, that's LL. I didn't know until he said his name in the rap. Oh, I could see. Uh, he's like a slimmer LL than oh, no, no, we've seen in recent years. Yeah, he years. hasn't started working out yet. So mm -mm, mm -mm. there's something I was thinking about during this movie. Like if my current self traveled back to when did we start this? 2015. Yeah. And said to my younger self, like, hey, listen, I know you and Jamie are talking about this 80s movie podcast, but I have a warning for you. You will have done this for more than seven years, and you will have watched more Fat Boys movies than Molly <laughs> Greenwald movies. I would have. I don't know if I would have like, signed on for this. I don't know about that. Yeah, the Fat Boys storyline in this. At first, I wasn't all in on, but when they sing that "All You Can Eat" song, oh I was God. all in. <laughs> And the, I'm going to say, manager of Sparrow, like, chases <laughs> them out. <laughs> that might have been, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but that was one of my favorite scenes in this that movie. That was a was highlight there. because I couldn't yeah. believe we just watched, I guess, an entire music video It was video like a music video, this. yeah. Yeah, it was and their music video. And then go back and get thirds of everything. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how they came up with their name. That's the titular. That's why they are the Fat Boys. Right, of course. I loved it when their name was, oh, what was it? Three, the Disco Three was their name. Yeah, yeah. And I loved it when the one guy, 
didn't want to go. And they're like, but man, we're the Disco 3. And they get up, and the first words out of their mouth are, we're the fat boys. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what? And then they come to the realization that they should be the fat boys. But it's, that's who they should be. I was shocked that they were high school students, too. Yeah, they were the youngest. I know, because they're high school. I was shocked that they were, um, that the... I mean, we did frogs in my high school, but the fetal pigs were a little gross to me. We'll get there. Our listeners that don't know this movie are like, what? Fat boys and fetal pigs? What is this movie? First of all, <laughs> just watch it. It's just like eight music videos strung together. Yeah, with it's a kind fun of a little plot. memory. Well, and is this loosely based on the true story of how... Like their record, oh, I thought it was. That's I thought what I it read says. That somewhere. But yeah, the, they could have just said loosely based on something that we thought of in the writer's room because there is no way that any creation of any record label started in any way close to what is happening in well, this movie. Uh, some of it, okay, let's let's get into okay, it. Let's get fine. into it. Let's let's so do it. Here's what I want to say first and yeah. foremost before we kind of get into this this is directed by Michael Schultz, who mm. directed. Of course, Disorderlies. Of oh, course, Disorderlies. Yeah. And also, do you remember The Last Dragon? Oh. That we watched uh, about a year ago. We watched that. He directed that as well. Oh. So, music videos, kind of like martial arts. But remember the lady in The Last Dragon wanted to be, she wanted to be like a singer or something. Oh, and they yeah, put her in yeah, goofy yeah. outfits. And yeah, this guy has a style. To what he's doing. Yeah. And this really felt like both of those movies kind of crammed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say there's a lot to discuss. Jamie, I think this is the least amount of notes I've ever taken for a movie that we've talked about. You say that. I think it's that you just don't take good notes. No, I don't. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you there. But you are very good. You've always been. You've got You've got an excellent... Um, Memory. You can remember things that happen. I need to write it down because I, I once I enjoy it while I'm seeing it, and if I don't write it down, it's it's out of sight, out of mind. But I did. I, I'm sure there's a number of people out there that can remember the entire Fruity Pebbles rap, but not a lot of people. <laughs> so you're the one. You were one of them. <laughs> yes. If we want to take a commercial break at any point while we um, are retelling this movie, you could do a little. I could just Fruity Pebble rap. For us. Well, I could just do I some think. other cereal commercial. Oh, whichever one comes to mind, <laughs> whichever one feels good for you. Fantastic. No, the reason I say I didn't take a lot of notes is I only have a page and a half of notes, but movies like this, I kind of, I find sometimes I'm just staring at my notes too much typing and I'm not watching. Not enjoying the happening. movie. Yeah. And when someone starts singing, I can kind of take the hands off the keyboard Lace them behind my head and sit and back for watch a good the song three go down. minutes and just watch what's happening. Even when Sheila E's on the ground in the concert and we're kind of riling around. That was even really when she's something. singing that one Prince song and Prince isn't there, but there's a poster of Prince in the background at one point. <laughs> I was like, I guess they couldn't get him to do this movie. He's like, mm -mm, I'm doing Purple Rain. No, so she's like. How about if I dress the rest of my band yeah. as though they are you, Prince? And, and they like, all have hair like you. How about I do that instead? Yeah. He's like, fine, yeah. go through my closet. There's plenty of puffy pirate shirts in there. Grab what you need. Have at it. That have one guy with the giant Sally Jesse glasses and the puffy pirate shirt. The David Schwimmer looking guy? Did you see the guy that looked like oh, David yeah, yeah. Schwimmer? Yes, yes. Her, her band was amazing. I... And when new Her, you know was who on? was amazing? Her manager was something else. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst actress this, in this, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that lady. I, this movie is just wall to wall non actors. But when that lady started talking, I was like, is this really her manager? Because when she's like, hey, you are on DMC, right? They are playing your album all the time. I am <laughs> Sheila E's manager. It's like, this is painful to watch. She was rough, but I wanted more of her. You know, when something's so bad that you're like, where's Sheila? Yeah, where's then she manager? just disappears. <laughs> yeah, like, she's oh, just no. done. Because <laughs> Sheila's got it from there. The boys like her. And she's like, I don't think we need to walk through you. Although I do like she gets a little song when Sheila E's doing the, she does get to sing with her for like a hot second. When? Oh, when they're rapping? When they're in, no, when they're in the, 
they're recording and they're when the sh- when she's singing by the Prince poster, which I was like, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> it really the manager's makes, there. Oh, Prince is. I I guarantee you that was the conversation because Prince is like, I am. Uh, uh-uh, uh, no hands. Yeah, off. he was like, I'm no. But I, yeah, you got to use a poster of me, and also uh, I'm just going to write a number on this piece of paper, and that much is how I'm getting. That's, that's how much what, I'm getting paid just for yeah. the poster and lending you Sheila E for a few days. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, let's right. let's do okay. it because I don't know what's going on for most of this movie. Well, well, in the beginning, we're seeing this this record company start from the ground up. Crush, crush, which I thought it was Kush, but it's Crush Gold Records, right? Wait, right? What? Crush Groove, Crush Groove okay. Records. <laughs> Did I Sorry. watch the wrong movie? No, no, no. There's a Sorry. lot of overlap with what we're talking about. No, Crush Groove Records right, is yes. getting kind of its startup, and it includes. Run DMC, mm-hmm. Run. And you'll have to excuse me because I I enjoy this. I know Run DMC. I know LL Cool J. We or I know New Edition. Who else is in here? There's so many. Uh, the Fat There's, Boys. There's, Curtis Blow is all over this movie. I don't know him from. Neither do I. Listen, <laughs> if he wasn't wearing a giant chain with the word Blow on it, I would not have known who okay. he was. This is not my very appropriate word jam. Like this is not my thing. I I really did not grow up this kind of music existed when I was young, but I didn't listen to it. I was so, aware of it. Yeah. Yeah, I was aware of it, but... But it wasn't your jam. No, no. Yeah. I really didn't know this. I knew who the Fat Boys were. I watched enough mm-hmm. MTV to get a sense of this, but I never owned an album by Run DMC or, honestly, any of these people. Mm-hmm. Um, this... It really is interesting to watch this and to listen to the lyrics and everything, and just think about how people from this time probably think that rap now is so stupid. But man, listening to these lyrics, I was like, this is the silliest garbage I think I may have ever heard. Well, and then when he goes to his dad, to uh, the pastor, to ask him for money, I'm thinking, what does the dad think? You know how, like, in sure. general, like, you know, the older generation is always like, your music now is... What did they think? Because they're really just, I mean... It was innovative for its time, and it still is. But, 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 yeah, like what? Of course, it's that old dad thing. I was like, what? What happened to this guy? See, but I think that's part of the true story. Is probably they went to their dad to get the money, Maybe. and the dad denied it, and the dad they probably grew up in the church. Like I think that whole thing might be real. I love so it is all about these like hip hop rappers, right? But there right. is a couple of white guys sprinkled in there. Um, I love it in the beginning when we're at the record company, all the white guys just wear dark sunglasses all yep. the time. <laughs> yes. I was like, are they blind or no, no, no. They're just super cool. Um, yeah, the one, <laughs> the one white guy's like, I don't know. I guess they're, he's more of their partner. Well, he seems to be part of the, cause he's the cause guy he who's... goes in for the bank loan. Right. Is that the guy oh, that goes oh in? Oh my God. Would they yeah. rap in the middle of a bank? And the guy's like, oh, that's the type of music? I don't think we'll be giving yeah, you Yeah, we're not loan. giving you loan. <laughs> oh, and he yeah. stops him like, yeah, I get it. I know what you're doing now. It's Yeah. Yeah, so this guy's like the producer, engineer. I don't know what he's doing because he's outside the booth at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I love how Run DMC, he's like, whoa, 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 guys, come on. Give me the good shit. And then they start singing again. I'm like, were they really doing a bad job before? Because he's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> They get into it, though. Run and DMC. is that. Yep. See, this is what I was going to say earlier was, I'm familiar with the music, but I don't know. I, there's Run. There's DMC. Yes. Right? I guess those are the two from Run DMC. It sounds so <laughs> ignorant, I know. Well, there's their DJ. <laughs> DJ J. Some, we just sound like idiots now. Yeah, we, we do. I'm kind of embarrassed. This movie, and we could have did a little more. Re- icons in the music industry. I know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> How many people are in Run DMC? My brother's probably Three, cringing. Four? Is Aerosmith part of them? I'm not <laughs> no, sure. I know that much. Okay. I know that much. Uh, so, But there's Randall, who is not one of the performers. He's Run's brother, and he is also trying to kind of manage and produce and kind of be a part of this whole record making. Now, Yeah, Randall's like the... 
he's the singular actor in this movie just trying yeah. to keep everything together yeah. as all these other musical artists tap dance anytime they're in the scene and he's like I this is a movie right like he always seems to be playing this as though it's an actual movie where everybody else is just laughing their way through they're all having a blast can you imagine how fun this was for them to make like I, come on guys let's all I get together I would not imagine when yeah. the, when the Beastie Boys the out Beasties of nowhere come out at the talent up. show. It's like, at the talent this is show, insane. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand this. So they have this startup little record company where yeah. they they've got a couple, like you said. There's um, who's the guy with, that wears the necklace all the Curtis time? Curtis Blow. Curtis. There <laughs> is a, there is another white guy who wears a necklace with just the big number sign and one on it, and then a word on it underneath it that I could not read, but I imagine it, it said number dad. One. Yeah, like, I was going to say number one. It's so dad. weird. I don't know. I don't remember. But so their record company is kind of very startup, yes. but they are like, they're hot and they're mm-hmm. starting to sell records, run DMC, but I don't understand. So people, their records are in demand. But they don't have the money to make any more records, but people are buying their records. I didn't understand how they didn't have, well, I, like, how they could be doing so well, but not financially. Well. Right. I mean, here's what I'm going to assume they've been trying for a while and nothing has hit. And for whatever reason, whatever this new song is, finally got radio play. Mm-hmm. So now they're being sold out at all the stores and the stores are ordering more. But, but they, they don't, don't have the means to make more. They don't have the money more. to press all okay. of these records. Yes. Got it. Okay. Now, sorry. I mean, no, um... no, no. It's fine. I, I honestly think it is that simple. Okay. <laughs> like, And I don't want to say you should have understood that because most of this movie is a lot of times just characters yelling and talking over each other. And I was like, I can't keep track of what the conversation is. <laughs> well, the whole thing, the thing is now they want to get this, this records hot mm-hmm. and they need to get more of them made. Right. So they need money to make more of them. Right. Um, yes. Now they all, the mm. whole record company, everybody that works at the record company works at a car wash as well (laughs) in the beginning of this movie but then in unison i love it when they all quit and they say it five six seven i quit yeah all like 16 of them um they rap for a little bit at the car wash right we get a little car wash i was confused like later on when run dmc's like listen we quit the car wash Mm -hmm, it's like oh mm -hmm. i didn't know that was you guys like i didn't know you guys as a band along with other members of this record studio also all have the same job at the car wash they all it was their all their side hustle was the car wash yes and well, they all also, quit at the same time i love the car wash thing i think it's really great but i also think it's funny how in this opening we do meet our old friends the fat boys and the oh, one yeah. guy appears to be packing a pound cake in a lunchbox oh, and yeah. only a pound cake, I guess, <laughs> to take to school because he puts it in a lunch pail like he's working at a construction uh, site. Uh, so later on, when they're in high school, it's like, how old are these men? Yeah. The fat boys seem to be the youngest. The other guys all seem to be. That's why they all need jobs, right? Because right. they're out of school. They got to make money somehow. But yeah, I, I saw that where he's packing the pound cake in the lunchbox. I didn't really understand. He's packing what was the pound cake. The other guy's just ironing, I think, oh, yeah. a tie <laughs> or a belt yeah. for a good hour. We follow, there's little side stories here and there. The fat boys have their own little theme. And I have to say, until they eat the buffet, the sobreros eat it, eat right. everything number, I was kind of like, why Why do we keep following the fat boys? What are we doing with them? I think but I it had, does pay off. I think or I thought it did. Opinion. I was wrapped in joy every time I went to yeah. the fat boys. <laughs> You're like, they're back! But they're in the high school hall. When they were in science class, like you yeah. said, and the one appears to be cooking a fetal pig to, I guess, Yeah, eat. roasting it. He's like roasting it. <laughs> this is great. Let's just hang out with them. I would probably watch another Fat Boys movie if there's one out there. So if anybody knows of one, let us know. I'll do it. Did they do anything else? I'll just else? watch it for fun. We don't have to do it for the podcast. We don't even know. We should be included in the podcast. Yeah. We should make sure we get all of theirs in. Oh, the fat boys are also perverted. They look up the skirts. Uh, yeah, the, the one guy just yeah. hangs around staircases so he can look up women's skirts. Perverts. Mm, yeah. 
And that whatever coonskin cap or whatever he's wearing is not a good look. Like, no, that is... it's not. He's... Later on, two of them are wearing it, and I was like, "Isn't it that guy's?" Thing? <laughs> you can't. Can you take that from him? I don't think you should, because it's not becoming on either. I of you. I do think it's the one that doesn't seem to have a thing, because the one guy has the big, <laughs> giant yeah. like rhinestone covered glasses uh-huh. and the other guy has that stupid Davy Crockett hat and the other guy has kind of nothing nothing and even he, they don't give him any lines he has I think the least amount of lines now didn't you say one of one of them has passed away one or of have them they? has I did not the one with the glasses into, I think right? I think it is I think it's the yeah. one with the glasses yeah, yeah. anyway just, um, just to bring down the room before we yeah. <laughs> Continue well, because they do, I think we get their biology class performance right away. That's when, then mm-hmm. they have a whole, they're in biology. So they're still in high school. They're, like you said, they're uh, cooking up pigs and dissecting a, a fetal pigs in their biology class. Yep. And they're bored with it. They're not into yeah. it. And the teacher, I like the angle they keep getting on the teacher. In, did you notice how they kept giving her that? Anyway, teacher's not having it. She literally calls them fat. She's like, well, it's these fat guys. No, she doesn't even <laughs> say that. Because it's, it's even better because she's writing stuff on the board. Mm-hmm. And the one fat boy who does all the mouth noises just starts doing who mouth noises. Who beatboxes? Yeah. Yeah, beat, sorry. <laughs> beatboxing. <laughs> and she turns around and goes, who has a radio? Okay. And I was like, lady, clearly that's person making fart noises or whatever that's not a radio and then she goes you the fat one and then all three of them stand up which i thought was kind of funny and she kicks them all out of class but it doesn't take them long all of a sudden we this is listed as a musical and now we're in musical mode makes sense because they do a whole they get on the staircase and in they have a whole dance that they do about Don't You Dog Me. Don't You Dog Me is this song. And then <laughs> one guy barks the whole time. Yeah, the guy with the like glasses. It's like a weird computerized modulated arr, bark. Arr, arr, arr. Right. Like that. Yeah. And, it, and I imagine But they it's do a love a song lot. to the one girl who yes. he ends up getting at the end. But all three of them are chasing this poor girl around the stairwell. I love it because it almost appears as though this is just a thing they do every day, which is perform a concert between yeah. classes. Yeah. And everybody gets into it. There's a whole dance yeah. routine that these, and they slide down the banister, yep. the other kids in class, because they do it right as the bell rings. Yeah. The only person not into it is the girl that they are chasing and harassing. Yeah, she, well, she's song. like waving. Another bad actress. Thank God she doesn't have any lines. Oh, no, no. She no, like you, Use her hand you and can't like gives... give most of these people lines in no. this movie. Giving anyone dialogue was a huge mistake. <laughs> I thought Sheila, Sheila. I used to get Sheila E confused with Sheena Easton. Oh, because um, Sheena E. I yeah. see why. Yeah, Sheila E was fine. I thought she was fine. I thought mm-hmm. she was the most competent one here. Yeah. I mean, that's. I guess that's a compliment. I just yeah. Paid. No, yeah, I would agree. I All agree, right. and okay. I think it is a compliment, yeah. But again, I think that he's trying to elevate this, which is a huge mistake. Don't do that. Sheila E. knows what she's capable of, and it's just yeah. a little more than most everybody else. And she's like, I'm fine with this. As long as I can outshine whichever member of Run DMC I'm on camera with at this moment, I'm fine. But wait, she's not even in this movie yet. If we're going through... Which we no, are. No, no, no. I know. I know. We There's haven't even seen stuff. her yet. Yes. No. We haven't even seen her yet. We're still getting to, we talked about this. So, so we've got Run D or the fat boys. We meet them. They're so much fun. They're still in high school dissecting pigs and rapping in hallways. Right. Now, Randall, <laughs> they are very busy. Randall and Run, they need the money to keep the record company going. So mm-hmm. they go to their dad, who is, who is working at a church as a preacher, I'm guessing right. in a church. Yeah. And he gives them the straight up, like, first of all, they're like, we're famous. We have, we have a, a record deal. We have records out and we're famous. And he's like, are you Lionel Richie? Are you Prince? No, <laughs> I yes. loved it. Um, and he, they, he, Russell's like, yeah, we need a little bit of money. We need mm-hmm. $5,000, which is a lot of money, mm-hmm. really. That's a lot of money, yes. That's a lot of money. It's a and lot I of money love... to me now. A, a 1985 yeah. anyone? That's it's a, a lot, lot of, money. of money. And I love it. He looks at him. First of all, the dad's got a weird receding hairline thing happening this there, too. This dad does <laughs> not look like he, he looks like a character 
in like a living color sketch or something. Like <laughs> they just put a bald cap on one Wayans and threw him into this. Sketch. And it was like, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They didn't think, but we don't see him again after this. But anyway, his advice to Randall is, you know what? I feel like this is God's will. This is a, God is telling me that this yep. is something you have to handle. I'm not giving you the money, <laughs> and you got to figure it out. So, womp womp. Bye, that didn't old work. man. I do love yeah. how they have to go to his place of employment. It's not like they can go to his house. Like, there is something weird and distant about the relationship with all of these characters who appear to be related. Oh, the yeah. The one guy, I guess, which I did not know until the end of this movie, is in college. And Ron even has to ask, was that an apartment or a college dorm that they're beating him up in? It looked like a college dorm room. It looked like a college dorm, but then was it um, was it the studio? Like, did that one guy sleep at the studio? <laughs> I think it's a college <laughs> dorm. Because, oh. And I love how his brother, his brother has to say to Sheila E., where is that place? <laughs> he doesn't know where he lives. He doesn't know that he's in school. It's it's really strange how it doesn't seem like these characters interact at all, but also they they're are so around tight. each other all the time. Well, when they're at the record comp when they're recording and I guess prior to quitting when they were at the car wash. <laughs> Well, they were plus, always together. I mean, plus they're at bars all the time and clubs together and everything they like that. They go to that. the clubs. They do go to the clubs and have fun. It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so let's go to a club right now. And I got to oh, yeah. tell you, this bouncer in just a fur vest, just a oh, big fur he's vest. He's great. He's great. Else. It's really yeah. great. And this guy's yeah. in this movie a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It, I like, I enjoyed him too. I enjoyed yeah. him. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I was talking about the guy with the big Sally Jesse glasses and the, and the puffy billowy. One of Sheila's yes. side guys. Yeah. He's the guy that's playing the tambourine. <laughs> Giles, that was amazing. Oh. oh, that is his instrument of choice. I mean, you got to play when you got to play second to Sheila. I love it. So Sheila is at pl- singing at the club yeah. and she sings that great song. I love bizarre. Oh, mm-hmm. my. I heard a song, and that's what you want. It's mm-hmm. a But Prince sings that with her, right? Prince wrote it with her. Isn't that I his voice that know. is <laughs> I in think it? It is. Like you can hear him going. <laughs> 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 but he is not in this movie. No. And like you said, she's got some some band members that have Prince's hair and Prince's clothes. And sing back up with her. Mm-hmm. But I can only Prince. imagine he had the script. He's like, get this shit out of here. <laughs> I don't. He He's like, music. I got my, what's that black and white moon movie that he did <laughs> that we watched? <laughs> under the cherry moon. Yeah. He's like, I am writing under the cherry moon. <laughs> I ain't got time for this, Sheila. I've just started. I'm in a bathroom, in the bathtub, having a conversation with another man for a very long time. <laughs> I might be gay. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure. I'm, not, I'm Prince. Prince, does it matter? Well, he's not in this, but she is singing that wonderful song. Right. And um, she looks at her. She's bummed to be at this club, to be honest. At the end, she sings the hell out of the song, performs yeah. like a all over the place. But she's not happy to be here. She wants a bigger record deal. How is she going to get a record deal? Meanwhile, Run and Randall and these guys are all in this club, and they're pumped because, I mean, they need to find money to make more of their records but they are on the radio they are known that's how her exactly. manager is like oh you guys are all over the radio <laughs> i have heard of you yeah. let's sit down and drink these tiny bottles of champagne did sure. you see those adorable bottles of champagne they that's had so like cute. beer bottle size champagne bottles i didn't know that stuff existed I mean, on airplanes, I guess, and at these clubs. It's, it's, so it's adorable. Great. I love it's adorable. It. There, there's a couple of other, like, um, older, like, manager, record company style white guys that want right. in on them, but Randall's very much, like, negotiating the deals, allegedly. Yes. There's one guy in particular who you talked mm-hmm. about their dad's receding hairline. This guy also has a questionable hairline. Mm-hmm. 
He kind of looks like at the end of Tropic Thunder when it's Tom Cruise, but they put him in a weird <laughs> bald cap. And, th- and he's got like these big teeth with giant gums and stuff. Like, is this the, yeah. Yeah, and this guy is really into Run DMC. And yeah. he goes up to Russell and he's like, hey, dude, listen, I'm ready to sign these guys. Yeah. I'll give you 20 grand right now and then we can talk about the rest later. Which seems like a great deal. Exactly. But some Russell wants to keep it independent. I'm not sure why not. I think Russell wants to keep it independent. He doesn't right. want to sign them to a deal. He yeah. wants to keep it with Plus I, Krush, I think that right? he I think he already like has we never see that this guy's like a scummy dude, but he just kind of looks like a scummy dude. Well, no, he he's he he gets the card from that scummy fur guy, right? That everybody warns him against? Right, right, yes. Yeah, that's the guy I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about the other guy that really is from the record company. I think, I think, oh, I thought they were the same guy. No, there's (laughs) one guy that, there's the one guy that everybody warns him against that gives him the record for the fur company. And he lends him the money. That's the guy that then ends oh, up no, beating no, no, him no. up. Okay, I know what you're saying now. Yes, yeah. But then no, there's I the guess other that, that guy that really does want to sign them. Yeah, but I still thought Both that guy was supposed looking. to be scummy. Like, that guy just looks like a scumbag <laughs> creep. What about when he's just staring at Russell at that one concert, and he's got the girl rubbing his shoulder, and he's just staring down Russell like, I won't kill you. This you guy give is your great. Money. Even at the end when Russell finally gives him the money, the pause that this actor takes... To open the envelope, to count the money before delivering the line, I guess we're even now. I was like, this is a mistake. It should have been cut for time. (laughs) It's really great. But But, so what is it? So like you said, there's a record company guy, one of the slimier looking guys with the bad hairline, who wants to pay for, you know, to sign Run DMC. But Randall doesn't want it to happen. For some reason, Randall, again, does he want to keep them independent on his own record label? Is that, that's what I came to understand. Like the stakes of this movie are so low and at times like Mm non-existent. Like just the fact that everybody's mad at each other. But then in about five or ten minutes, they'll be fine with everything again. And nothing. Well, these two get, and I get it, why Randall gets mad and they get. Right angry that randall did what he did didn't mm-hmm. make deals and but they're All anyway because right. they're they're like a little family <laughs> a little record family yeah and randall is making decisions for all of them without consulting anybody else exactly that's, that's the big problem but yeah after this club scene where they do meet sheila e and they they hang out and have a few drinks this mm-hmm. is when they go to try and get a legit loan from the bank oh yes yes and this bank loan teller, manager, whatever you call these people, is having none of it once he realizes what rap music is. Plus, yeah. he does ask him for their books, and the guy hands him, like, this manila folder full of crumpled up papers with, like, yeah. food all over it and yeah. everything. it's a disaster. And it is funny, because the guy's like, listen, if you if you don't understand some of that, just ask me, because I wrote it all down. Yeah, I, I got all the information. Right. It's in my head, and then... Yeah. Yeah, so they don't get no, the bank loan. Yeah, so there's no loan. Um, so like you said, Russell decides to... We don't see where he gets the money. He just walks into some, I don't know, shady-looking building. Yeah. And we just hear voiceover of like, oh, yeah, yeah, you want that money? Yeah, okay, you can have that money. Mm-hmm. Just get it back to me. The end. Mm-hmm. I like this cut here to, I guess, Sheila E's apartment? Yeah, I think this is maybe part of her place. Was they rehearsing? And ordering She's... sneakers at the same time. Ordering sneakers? The guy is ordering Adidas where he's like, yeah, I'll take three pairs of black <laughs> and white. I'll take five <laughs> pairs of red and black. I want eight pairs of white on white. I want another three pairs of white on black. I mean. And I guess they hang up on him because he's so mad. And he's like, after all the business I gave them. And I was like, (laughs) what is happening in this movie? You're not famous. How are you ordering this many shoes? Because deals are being made. The records will be made. and they'll Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But yeah, this is when Sheila... He does her own lady rap. Why does she act like an old lady? I don't know <laughs> why she starts out with that little, I'm going to do a rap. I think she's kind of making fun of them, how they do their rapping. But then she really does kind of bust yes. a rhyme. And it's, it's 
Groovy. Well, it's groovy. Um, the last line, Jamie, she calls him a big koala beanhead. <laughs> <laughs> How is that around? And plus, she's laughing half the time through this. Yeah. I think her manager or some guy dressed as Prince is there too, yeah. laughing yeah. through this whole thing. I, they are this group, Run DMC, and she are really fast friends. Like they're the most yeah. fast friends that could they possibly click pretty be. easily, right? Yeah. But they are just friends. Her and Run. I think and DMC. <laughs> when she calls him her brother later. <laughs> He is so mad he's like, about that. Oh no! What? Yeah. He's not wanting that. Oh, I love it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, um, so, where is Curtis Blow performing in a top hat? Where are we now? <laughs> <laughs> what is? This? I think this is another another. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I said Russell gets the money from the fur guy, but yes. we don't see it. But what we do see is <laughs> Curtis Blow in a top hat. <laughs> yeah. I- <laughs> Honestly, if you gave me a choice, do I want to see him deal with the shady mob or watch well, this watch guy in Kurt. a top hat prance around? I'm taking top hat all day yeah. long because yeah. we watch. Is this the first instance? No, no, no. We already saw no. Sheila E. sing an entire And we song. saw the the fat boys sing, too. We saw their Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is yeah. the third full song. And like, we've seen, I think, Ron DMC song. sing a yeah, little but I, bit. I think it's just been not, snippets. It wasn't a whole yeah, song. Like, yeah. this is our third Full song in yep, this movie. With the ladies on his side. It is a yeah. hilarious song because this is where I was really trying to pay attention to the lyrics of this. And it's it's really good because it's about like war and poverty oh, yeah. and how, yeah. you know, governments are corrupt and we as people have to do this for ourselves. But everything is undercut by the chorus where it is. <laughs> if I ruled the world, I'd love all the girls. <laughs> <laughs> It is amazing. And also it looks like they're performing at a high school gymnasium. Like yeah, like, I think it's part of, I don't know where they are. Yeah. maybe a hundred people there to see mm-hmm. him. He has backup dancers who most of the time just sit on folding chairs. Well, sometimes they rub his shoulders, but it's yeah, like, mostly they're oh, just sitting. When those girls are, are grinding against him, each holding a microphone in front of his face <laughs> so he doesn't have to hold one. <laughs> It's amazing. But this is, they, he is essentially the warm up. Ba- well, no, because then run. There's some kind of show where run DMC is supposed to kind of headline. This is the headline show. So, right. and this is the big deal is that like Curtis Blow is supposed to be the greatest guy ever, but mm-hmm. run DMC are headlining this show. Mm-hmm. So Russell's very nervous that run DMC, you know, they're not here yet and they're just about to right. go on. But they but show then up they with... toss <laughs> Sheila on. Yes, they put her on with what is Prince's group? Because I I can only imagine this is Prince's group. Is she it's something, something. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Let's say Prince in the Miami Sound Machine. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Revolution. Revolution. Yes, the revolution. Yes. Yeah. I you think got it. I think that's who these guys are. And the are. machine like, revolution. Nobody oh, there is no kidding. way Prince would allow anyone else in this movie to dress like him. So that's why this has to be his band. But I don't know that for sure, so, but maybe yeah, like Run DMC comes on and basically like highlights Sheila E and her yeah. band. And this was not what Randall expected. I mean, he's into Sheila, but he thought that this was going to be, yeah. He's, right, he's this, mad that this wasn't cleared through him, but at the same time, he's making deals behind everybody's back. Well, yeah. Or rejecting deals of behind course. everybody's back. Yeah, and I don't but think yeah, these this is when high she school sings, students are going to give you the money you need to pay back that guy. So I don't know why right. he's so upset. It's not like Run DMC or like, instead of us singing, here's Sheila right. E. Like, I think, no, they just add her in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a win win. This is when everyone. she sings her, her Holly Holly Rock song. Yep. You're gonna yeah. Holly Rock. Holly Rock. It's a terrible song. <laughs> but it's everybody wants to Holly Rock. Yeah. <sighs> but she, people love her. She plays her little percussion. She does her little Sheila E thing and She's great. This is when I looked her up. This is when I went down my wormhole. Oh, I was watching the it movie wasn't and the I was first like, what are you up really to now, Sheila? Gotcha. Like, she got her hooks in you here. Or, yeah. Or you were like, this is I need, to know. I don't need to pay attention to this. Well, kind of, a little bit of both. I was like, I want to know if she's still hanging around. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, I was like, all right, with the Holly Rock, I think I've heard enough. Because, <laughs> <laughs> again, 
another full song. I think and we holly rock again song. later. She comes back at us with the holly rock some more. And <laughs> okay. I didn't need it. But yeah, so Russell is mad at Run. And now Run takes some attitude out on their performance. He gets the whole crowd riled up. Whose house is it? It's Run's house. That's right. It's like sticking it to Randall, right? When, he, when they perform. He yes. grabs the crowd up. The crowd does love a little Run DMC. They get them all excited. They do their jamming. They, they, they still perform, right, after Sheila. Well, they do. Yeah, they do, because they get in a big fight, because it appears that Run's just going to leave, I guess, with Sheila E. I'm not really sure what's going on. Well, Run thinks Sheila's into him, but oh, she's... Oh, yeah, she's, 100%. Like said, she, we find out she, in a bit. It, it, well, in just a few minutes, because after this performance, we go to some, like, avant-garde club. Did you see this club? Another dance club. Girls who were, I yeah. guess, like, Statues of Liberty standing there? Did you see them in these outfits? <laughs> one by one, like, everyone takes turns arguing with each other. Like, well, Russell we, and we get Ron some conflict. argue. Then, DMC first, right? Doesn't DMC talks to Ron, to Russell first? He talks to Russell after, because the two of oh, them okay. argue, and then Run gets up and leaves, and Sheila E. Mm. goes after him. And then mm-hmm. D... DMC talks to Russell <laughs> and they kind of argue and cause they find out that he went behind their back and, and everything like that. Yeah. And then Sheila E and run argue cause Sheila E's like, I love you. Like I love my brother. Yeah. And then he's yeah. like, you know what? I'm just going to go dance with any girl I want here. And he starts making out <laughs> randomly with some girl on the dance floor. Immediately. Uh huh. <laughs> she like goes over. Oh and wait, sits he back finds out. Yeah. Doesn't the record company guy come up to run at some point and say, "I tried to make a deal with your brother and he right. did and not." He didn't that. Want so they it. found yes. out that Randall yes. uh, said no to this twenty thousand dollar deal or whatever. Yeah, it's it's a whole thing where everybody, like I said, fights with each other, and mm-hmm. eventually, like you can kind of see what's happening here because eventually, in the end, it's Russell, Russell, and Sheila E alone at the table. Yeah. And he's and like, got a listen, little more chemistry. let me walk you home. And mm-hmm. she's like, you're a jerk. And he's like, well, it's the least I can do to walk you home. So let's right. go do that. And then, of course, after being turned down, Run sees the two of them get in a cab together. Yes. And leave. And this yeah. is when he's in the back of, I don't know, some car with Oh, that this is when he's in the limo with the, with the yes. Galaxy Records. He's from right, Galaxy yes. Records. I wrote it down. Yes. Galaxy Records just needs someone associated with the band to say yes. Like, yeah. they, they couldn't get Russell, so they go after Run, but it's not like DMC's there signing off on this. No. And their DJ, who just kind of shows up to gigs and then is gone, mm-hmm. he's not there either. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's just run that he needs, I guess. We're back to the fat boy antics. Yeah, I have a this question. This is when he's wearing a skirt out of yeah, newspaper. Why? Is there a scene missing in this movie? Why does he just have newspapers <laughs> stitched into a skirt around him? <laughs> So in these, in his, I don't know why, because he's not, I, I guess it's boxers underneath, but it looks like shorts. When the fat boys are back, in like, the newspaper skirt is the flyer for the talent show competition that they can enter. The yeah, only yeah. reason I think that this is happening is so that they could, like, how are we going to stumble upon this flyer? I know. I'll wear it as a newspaper skirt. What? The Sounds great. Way. I love that idea. The writers are sitting around going, how could we possibly have them see a newspaper in New York City? I have no idea. Unless someone's wearing it. (laughs) Because it really did. Like, I really did. I thought I missed something. Like, I thought something happened and it skipped ahead or something. But it's just when you need them, the fat boys, right? Because you're like, oh, with this drama with Randall and and Ron and Sheila and the love interest and oh, and now we've got these How do we cut this tension? Oh, put them in a newspaper skirt. (laughs) And (laughs) also, I love how this ad clearly states to enter this talent show all you have to do is show up. <laughs> Could you? This is in New York City. Could you imagine the maniacs that you would get just showing up? That to are this? just 
just smearing their own feces on the walls as like, a we're talent, here. I guess. We're here. Do we get a record deal? <laughs> the top prize is a record deal. Second place is like a, a record player or like a, a set. like a. Yeah, it's like a big stereo Yeah, system. big stereo, yeah. Mm-hmm. A yeah. record player. But So it's auditions slash the talent show because... When LL Cool J yes. shows up, he's in the record studio. Well, first there's some lady. I don't know who she is, but there's some lady singing. Yes. And I don't know if she's somebody famous and doing like like everybody else a little cameo. Yeah, I don't know. But there's a woman that sings. She's she's good or whatever, but I don't know who she is. And then LL Cool J comes in. And again, this is all happening in the record studio. Um, yeah. LL comes in looking fine in his baby blue. Ooh, I've got. I have to tell you. I love Ella Cool J. I'm a round away girl. I'm Listen, not Listen, you are a lady, and as we know, <laughs> ladies love Cool J, so I totally yeah. get it. <laughs> no, uh, I com- I completely understand. And I what I love about this scene is they are ready to go home, which I think is really funny. Like yeah. I guess they've been auditioning people all day for I've had enough, yeah. I guess this new label. The record I don't, label? I don't know what they're doing. I don't but know just either. the fact that he shows up and they're like, dude. We don't have time for this shit. And he starts rapping and he they just all goes fall at in it. love. <laughs> like yeah. It's, it's They're like, he's idiot. signed. He's in. No problem. But that's all we see of him. He doesn't come back again. Uh, we don't have a... He comes oh, back at he? the very end when they are doing their final performance at that bar. Oh, yeah. He yeah, does yeah. jump into the crowd like yeah. with them all at the very end right. yeah 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 but it is but it is strange how you get how you get those cameos there's him again i don't know if that lady is anyone i didn't she wasn't like on screen long enough for me to no. really pay attention but she was good yeah i don't know <laughs> i i don't even know i couldn't even tell you what she did but like ll cool j and the beastie boys like for the amount of people and artists that are in this movie it is really weird to see these two just like show up and then whoop you're gone well, the beasties too are in and out so but now so we do auditions at the record company but we're also doing a talent show and right. new edition performs at the talent show they sure do in these sparkly suits sashaying themselves on the stage it's, it's amazing and mm-hmm. i don't know a lot about new edition like the only thing i really knew about new edition i know the stuff that was played on played on the radio yeah and i knew that bobby brown was in the band but he wasn't the lead singer and this is how little I do about New Edition. I assume with that lead singer's voice, it was like a little kid, like a Michael <laughs> Jackson of the Jackson Five. And to watch a grown man sing this song, I was really thrown. You were like, I what's happening? I could not believe what I was seeing. <laughs> The power of the voice, huh? It's Get amazing. You every it, time. It really is amazing. Like, yeah. their ensemble, their choreographed little dance, I understand why they won. <laughs> You're like, my vote goes to new edition. <laughs> like, fat boys, get off the stage. Get out there and start crying, you. You deserve to be crying. They do cry, you and they loser. try to steal the stereo from the, at the auditions when the fur guy is just staring at Russell at the, uh, <laughs> at the, at the talent show. He's in the audience, and he's just staring Russell it, it, down. It really <laughs> is like a... Like, it really is like a, he should have pointed to his watch and then like rubbed his fingers together like yeah. a money symbol. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't have him do that. And he's got a chick just rubbing his shoulder like right there. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah, they go to fight each other, Russell. Because now Russell finds out, finds out that Run signed himself mm-hmm. to the Galaxy Records. He took the yes. deal. Run is pissed because whatever. They're pissed at each other, but now they kind of fist fight for a second, right? It is um, it is a funny thing because Russell goes to the a payphone, which is just in the middle of this concert hall or whatever. And so he gets on to basically call and be like, hey, is my brother there? As he walks yeah. by him, then he hangs up, confronts him, and they fight. And I was like, you didn't need that phone seat. Like, not, at all. Just not at all. Not at all. You could have just looked and around just, and found oh. him. right? But, but yeah, they, they have a fight. It's, it's a whole thing. Because also Russell appears to be there to judge this, but he's constantly getting up from his he's judging nervous. table and walking away. I think because he's very nervous about the money thing right. and the fur guy is there wanting the money. Yeah, and but number one so dad sitting winner. next to him, and he constantly has to take his little like, notebook and just yeah. sit there, and I guess take notes for the both of them about how great New Edition is. 
But then, so here's the thing. New Edition wins this competition, but there sure. is another competition that happens. Like, this is like the prelim to I, go to the next level. Let's say that there is a competition in each of the five boroughs, and then the winners oh. of those face Get to off. Do a, okay. I, okay. I, don't, I don't really know because, yeah, this is like... Because later, New Edition when I was wins like, this, but then they don't make it to the next one, right? And that's how like, the Fat like, Boys get in. Wait a second, in. Fat Boys, you lost. Yeah. I understand why you're upset, but then later on, it was like, oh wait, so wait, there's that stereo. I thought it was at the other place. Yeah, but, no. yeah. This is like a preliminary. I guess it's like on a, America's. Mm, no, The Voice. No, what's the singing competition with Ryan Seacrest? Isn't that the voice? No, that's the one with Christina Aguilera and some other oh. people. Oh, Amer... Oh, top... Mm. Yep, America's <laughs> next top singer. Singer? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I think of this? Stu- it's bigger than every show we just stumbled through. Anyway, so... Okay. I, I imagine it's like that where you like have to perform for these first judges and you have to and like, get you go to the next that. round. Yeah, okay. So this was just the first round, round. Mm-hmm. and new edition won this round. They crushed it. First of all, the beastie boys appeared to have shown up with one microphone for the three yeah. of them. Yeah. So they have to like take turns walking up to a mic on a stand. And I think people are booing them and I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so everybody loses. But it's funny because I mentioned, I told the fat boys to go cry about it because they literally go in the audience and start sobbing. They're so upset. Uncontrollably. And then Curtis Blow, I guess because he feels so bad for these grown men that are crying, are like, I can get you in the final competition. Yeah, I'll get you guys. Just make sure you're here at this time and I'll make sure that you're still in it. I'll pull strings. It's fine. I I expect him to walk away and they'd be like, it worked. Yeah. No, but they're legitimately sad. They're very sensitive, the fat boys. They are. They sure are. And, Jamie, how do they celebrate this? Oh, well, by the best scene in this movie. Not that there's not fun scenes, but they have a lovely song, the fat boys, which I guess is a tune of theirs called All You Can Eat. And When, when I heard this, I had no interest in ever listening to any more fat boys songs. Like, <laughs> like I this is like, the one. Nope, not doing On that repeat. Wikipedia research. If yep. this is what they're promoting, if their music is all about how hungry they are, how mm-hmm. fat they are, I guess something about dogs in the school, whatever that was, I was <laughs> like, I, nope, uh-uh, sorry, I'm out on these guys. This, but this this little montage here, this little video is pretty great. It's a joyous video. Yeah, yeah. It they devolves, go through. They eat everything oh. at Sparrow, and to the point where they're just now giving. They them get handed sh- the cold cuts, the giant, giant cold cuts. meat. Just like, yeah. I don't know. Blocks of deli pounds meat. of salami. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, they eat, they get, they go through the line, they get pizza, they get, you just get shots of like, um, like chicken parmesan and then half empty trays of Italian food. And then they're sitting down and loving it and eating all of it. And then you had said this earlier and then they, they finally, there's nothing else left. So they're just giving them like the whole giant pieces of, of deli meats. They're eating it all. And then. The manager or the owner of of the place goes to chase them. They've run pretty fast for a bunch of fat boys that just ate all that food. <laughs> <laughs> so much food. I was like, that's dangerous. Don't run like that. But they, you're you gonna can upset walk your out. Stomach. It literally says yeah. all you can eat. You did nothing wrong, fat boys. Their faces, their shirts are all stained up. The one guy's got some kind of goo on his Why face. Does, Jeez. Like, what was and they he all eating? make fun of him. Did for he it? stop for like an ice cream sundae on the way home? I don't know. But he's... They just ate so much. Italian meat-based and pasta-based products, and this guy sits down and looks like his whipped cream all over yeah, he's his got face. Whipped cream on I, his face. I don't know where that came I from. Don't know. And these but other two is... make fun of him for yeah. being fat. <laughs> but this is where they sit down and they come up with their name. We're just the fat yeah. boys. This is who we are, and yep. it's great. It's a really fun scene in the movie, a video, music video. It's a really yeah. fun song about all they can eat. Yeah, um, it's it's fun. Again, I might argue with you about the song, but the video itself was really fun. 
And yeah. this, I think this was a highlight for me because all the rest of the music videos we watched are just people on stage singing. And yeah. this is the first time they're doing something with yeah. cuts and edits and they're, they're speeding things up. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's... Oh, yeah, they go down the stairs. Don't they go up and down the stairs? <laughs> they go up and down the stairs <laughs> several times. Pizza. And everybody has to watch them in, a, in yeah. horror and amazement that mm-hmm. these three... Listen, they're overweight, but not like terrifyingly obese either. Right. It's yeah. like these three chubby men are, I guess, eating everything in this shop. Yep. And I loved it. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was it's really a lot fun. Of fun. It's a, and again, it's a nice little like break from the family drama and the record deals. You know, yep. we're just watching yes. these guys stuff their right. faces and come up with their band name. Um, oh, this is the this is a great little flashback scene when Russell's laying in bed and he has all the flashbacks in black and white to when he was like making the deal with the fur guy and saying oh, no to the record yeah, deal guy right. and when he first met Sheena e, Sheila E yep. and it's all he see he's laying in bed and he can't he's tossing and turning and he's seeing all of these flashbacks in black and white, oh, which is kind of great. Yeah, no, that and then it comes the to him how he's good. Oh, because the he's got to get the money back to this guy and mm-hmm. he doesn't have any way to do it and his brother has sold you know is is on, hooked on the other record deal so he's kind of fucked but then he realizes it's it's Sheila E that's his right. ticket so he runs to his friend in the dorm room or whatever <laughs> I thought he was in the studio but he runs to the the other white dude the engineer whoever he is mm-hmm. and is like I've got it I've got our idea we've got to sign we've got to get Sheila Right. And yes. We got to get her to. And again, record. It, this idea kind of goes nowhere. Like it's it's you know what I mean. Like I, mm. the movie just continues. It starts on. up, but it fizzles out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now we're now we're like in the Fat Boys movie for a while. <laughs> this different movie that the Fat Boys are in because yeah. now they perform, and I guess. The final competition, which I think might be a competition for children, because <laughs> the second place winner is a 10 year old kid, yeah. and we see no other performers. No, no. But we New Edition didn't make it to this one. This is the one that New Edition doesn't make it to, right? No, yeah. they should be there. Perform- I, it is really weird mm-hmm. that. That nobody that we saw at the other performance is here, including Mm-mm. the winners. The mm-hmm. fat boys are here. And like I said, a child wins second place. <laughs> and when they're performing, did you see this huge buff dude who is so into them for just oh, a little yeah. while until his girlfriend leaves to get on stage with the fat yes. boys? And the guy with the red shirt that's like yeah. crazy huge. Yeah. That red yeah. shirt is about to just burst off of this. But man. it's he's a huge guy in the shoulders, but he's mm-hmm. a tiny guy in the waist he's, and the legs. <laughs> right, yeah. He's been doing a lot of arm work at the gym. <laughs> Yeah, I drew a picture of him in my notes. You can kind of see. I don't know, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a stick figure in a giant sweater. <laughs> That's great. Jamie, you need to start sh- taking pictures of your notes for me. I'll put them up on our Patreon so people can look at your <laughs> okay. notes. You draw people all the time. Go back through even old things. <laughs> <laughs> we could have a competition. We, we could be like, identify what which movie was this. this yes. <laughs> yeah, you should. Honestly, I'm not kidding. Send me pictures of your okay. notes. They're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's great. And sorry, I, I didn't mean to say his girlfriend left for the Beastie Boys. This is the girl from their high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's in the audience. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. Fat Boys win first prize, which, as we said, is a recording contract, but, but they're in love with that stereo. They're mad about the stereo. Well, they, I guess they're convinced that they won second, that they didn't win, because they're yelling at the kid. Like you said, there's the other kid in the competition who is like, oh, I got the stereo. And they're, like, fighting him for the stereo. And they're like, why are you? have won the record deal. Why do you want the stereo so bad? Yes. It's like an adult has to come in and be like, now, children, let's break this yeah. up a little bit. You guys you are the real. men who just competed in a child's competition you guys kicked all their asses they did get the crowd wild like when they hit the stage the fat boys and and you they feel yell like say fat boys yeah 
<laughs> just you. say fat boys. It's not even like when I say fat, you say boys. It's like yell fat boys, everybody. Yeah, just yell it at us. But it's it's like you see the evolution of them, right? We we forgot to mention earlier when when one of the club scenes, the club scene with the guy with the vest, with the fur vest, mm-hmm. is the bouncer. The fat boys are trying to get in that club, right. but because they're underage, they give them some really weird ID to try to they pass off. Fake IDs with yeah. three very skinny terrible, men. really weird. Yeah, but they can't get in. And then the guy's mm. like, "All right, fine, I'll you know I'll let you guys in because I mm. feel bad, but you got to promise not to drink, and it'll be ten dollars each." And they're like, "We fucking can't afford yeah. that." I really and they don't go into like, the club. I can't believe this, and to pay them, they just leave. They just leave. They don't get into the club. So, the but bouncing- now. Oh, go ahead. Here, here they are winning the competition, yeah. and they've named themselves. They've given themselves a titular name. Mm-hmm. And again, it's the wonderful evolution of the Fat Boys. It really, it, it, yes, yeah. yeah. I, I do like it when they try and get in, and the guy's like, I will let you in, but if I see any of you three fat fucks by that bar, I'm going to break <laughs> your goddamn necks. It really is kind of funny. <laughs> so, yes. okay. So. Now everything has sort of turned because we do get a quick scene of Russell getting beat up in, I guess, a freight elevator for some (laughs) reason. This is funny when they just take Russell. They just keep and he's not really getting hit, but he kind of is. (laughs) It's a lot of like acting like, oof. Oof, yeah, because like uh-huh. fists go off frames. (laughs) Uh Remember, they're hitting him and it's just like, oh, oh, and everything has like. A little bit of blood out of the corner mm-hmm. of the mouth. Just mm-hmm. just a tiny bit. And yeah, so he gets beat up. and Because he doesn't have the money. He's not giving the right. money up yes. to the fur guy. But and at, he the goes, same, at the same time, ahead. everybody's kind of turned on Run. Because this is when Run goes back and Curtis blows the first one like, dude, hey, you should have stuck with your brother, man. Yeah. I am out of here. I want nothing to do with this. Yeah. And then DMC is even like, hey, your brother's super cool. Remember, he used to be our DJ before, I guess, we hired the other DJ. Well, and he even says, like, if you're turning your back on your brother, what are you going to do? Like, you could be shady right. to me, which is yes. a good point, DMC. This, um, this is one of the, my favorite scenes of this movie. And it's it's a dumb thing to really laugh at. But Run is left alone, sitting in a chair. Mm-hmm. This chair's on wheels. And he's got a fistful of money. And as we've oh. seen in thousands of movies, he gets mad and throws the money. But because he's on a chair with wheels, he kind of wheels off screen <laughs> after he throws it because of the force. It looked Maybe like a mistake good. that they were like, I don't know. We don't need to shoot that. We'll again. Just it's, keep totally it in. Fine. it's fine. It's fine. Yes. Oh, um, but now let's talk ooh. about a sex scene. Oh, we get it. We have like 20 minutes left to this movie. And. Russell goes over to Sheila's house yeah, and is like, I, I just, I need a place to crash. And next thing you know, he's lighting candles. <laughs> she <laughs> appears to be asleep. And I think he wakes her up by lighting a candle, what, three inches from her hair? And then we just get them licking each other, like lick, <laughs> licking. It I thought awesome. it was his bottom, but it's his shoulder that she licks. Um, it's so funny. So much red light. It's like they're under heat lamps. Uh-huh. It's amazing and, looking. Mm-hmm. It's not too racy. It's not too saucy, no. of course. I think this is... And they do say fuck a couple times. Like, I'm, I was kind of surprised by that. I thought this was like a PG movie for most yeah. of it. But they dropped um, some F-bombs. So, yeah. But it's it's... It probably was PG. 85? It, it was probably PG. There wasn't enough to give it that R, and I don't mm. think PG-13 existed. But yeah, this is kind of a weird, funny sex scene, just kind of like forced into this movie. Yeah, just thrown in at the end. Like, we want you right. to know these guys do get it on. They don't just like... Well, even he says... Run <laughs> says it to Russell. I mean, she likes me, but she mm. likes what? you. <laughs> so this is showing us how much she likes Randall. Yeah. Oh, God, the like-like scene outside the <laughs> elevator when Sheila E. appeared to be on the next elevator up. Like, uh, <laughs> she she shows up right as all the commotion has stopped. <laughs> and but, I like it. Her first concern is Randall. And then she's like, but are you okay, Randall? Yeah, the guy who's bleeding. Well, no, n- never mind. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not both gonna, of them are. Yeah, yeah both, so of them were, both of them were kind of beat up. 
kind of. He gets now he goes back and gets so he they have their this little is sex his scene. Dorm room, I think. And he goes no, back. but you're right because the next day Run comes in to Sheila E's looking for his brother. Mm-hmm. And she's mm-hmm. like, he's not here, blah, blah, blah. And this is where he's like, well, where does he live? Because I have no idea where my brother lives. <laughs> and then when and, he goes there, he finds his brother getting beat up again. Yes. And again, and he, I think this is a college dorm room. Like, it really, right? Like, it looks. It does. We see yeah. the other doors open and they all, they look like college dorm rooms. I'll not disagree with you. The yeah. hallway is packed with students and I've <laughs> I'm like, what's happening? Where's the RA? Isn't there somebody to call? Because they're. I love how the thugs beat him up, and at the end, go, we're gonna do this every day until yeah. you pay. Him. It's like that is so much effort. Such it's a so threat. Much this is gonna happen every. We're just gonna beat you up enough. We're not gonna kill you. We're not even breaking bones. No. But we're just gonna give you a bloody lip every day. Yeah. <laughs> Every day we're going to come into your dorm room and throw you around a little bit. <laughs> Until it gets paid. It is awesome. And immediately, because, you know, this is a movie that's like an hour and 32 minutes long. So, yeah. you know, um, Run shows up and he and Russell, like, reconcile. And Russell's they like, make up. hey, um, listen, do you have five grand I can borrow? Because I owe some terrible man. And he's like, yeah, you got it, buddy. Yeah, we're brothers. No problem. There's a sweet little. Uh, I didn't mean to treat you like you're your little. You're my little brother, but I am your but little I brother. Am. <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs> and again, just doing this, just doing all this in a hallway full of people watching. Did you see the one guy who's standing there? And as they walk by, he looks at him and like wipes his lip, like he got some blood right there, buddy. Yeah. You didn't want to take care. of I was like, how is no one else stepping in to help him? Uh, she, mm. When Sheila comes up the door, she makes out with him right with that bloody, or up the elevator. She makes out with him right with that bloody lip. Yeah. Because she likes, she likes me, she, but she likes you. She likes you. him. You, yes. She likes you. Then, oh, my um, God. And now we, we go have, to, this is like the big conclusion. Yeah, this is our finale. Our, everything's yeah. fine. Basically... They're not working for that sleazy record producer, or they just bring mm-hmm. Russell with them to the sleazy record producer. Like, I don't know what their deal is at the end of this. Mm. Like, because it's just kind of like, hey, you know what? Everything worked out for uh, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's We're all fine. happy. Sheila's happy. The yep. Run's happy. Randall's happy. Mm-hmm. Curtis Blow's happy. <laughs> We see the fat boys wearing matching pink jackets. Oh, along yeah. With like their pink lady jackets. Yes. Like from the pink, pink ladies from this, Greece. Those yeah. are 100% like lighter pink, pink lady jackets. Uh-huh. And now they're all buddies with this fur wearing bouncer at the bar. Yeah. Because yep. they're big celebrities. They have a record deal. Run DMC is the, the tops. So they, the movie ends at a bar where. A guy in a tuxedo, <laughs> like, coerces everyone to perform one by one at the bar. Now, this is not on a stage. They're <laughs> standing like, at a bar, <laughs> performing one at a time. It is the weirdest way to end this movie. <laughs> but we get to see them all. And Sheila's got her some kind of furry fur jacket and a cat hat on. And you got Yeah, they even drag there. her up to be uh-huh. like, guess who can rap now? Sheila yeah. E. She's mm-hmm. a rapper. She's, she's not even going to talk like a weird old lady this time. No, she's, she's going to go full going blown. To she's going to go full blown. And there you have it, right? Yeah. It's a big performance at the end. That's how mm-hmm. this movie ends. It's like it's mm-hmm. like a it's like a concert movie cuz th- yeah. the plot is so paper thin and you're yeah. just there to watch these people perform. perform. Yeah. And I could imagine at the time if you were really into this Music. Oh, this was your jam. This movie this was movie. Probably pretty great. Super fun, and you got to and even the bad acting, you weren't bothered by it because you enjoyed the musical yep. acts for what they were, and you exactly. even thought it was maybe kind of fun. The mm-hmm. the, the act, yeah, no, I, yeah. and I have to say, even though this isn't my jam of music either, it's it was a fun movie to watch. Okay. It was a little long at parts, I'll say that, and. I did just say it was an hour and a half long. Yeah, we yeah, but it felt a little like, all right, let's get because, like you said, the story is so paper thin. But yeah. it's a fun enough movie, I thought. 
Yeah, I thought it I, was super fun for our purposes, especially. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, this was, I was not bored watching this. Mm-hmm. Like, every time I was, like you said, I think you referred to it as long parts, but every time I was like, uh, I'm not really, oh, wait, is that guy wearing a top hat performing? Okay, <laughs> I'm kind of back into this. So it really is something, I would say if anybody, you know, this is on Tubi for free, um, this is like the perfect movie to put on if you're doing something else, like yeah. I would never recommend watching a movie on your phone, but if you're like doing dishes or whatever, put this on. And oh yeah, because like, between the you performances don't need to pay and everything, yeah. Right, but the moment you hear music, look at your phone because it's yeah. probably pretty. Watch great. the number and definitely, definitely keep up with the Fat Boys in this movie. There, there. Yes, there are more little... Fat Boys movies. Yeah, and I. I don't know. I mean, I know that Disorderly was pretty bad because I mean it was. Just, just a fat boys movie but just the fact that they were that that's probably how they right because the disorderlies was after this i bet they were it like was two these years guys, after this yeah these guys and this guy made fun, um something. uh the last dragon the same year as this oh he was wow. busy that year busy yeah guy. yeah i love how the disorderlies were just like or not disorder sorry the fat boys were just <laughs> like i don't know we're the comic relief of this movie and we're gonna yeah, embrace we're it we're gonna make it. it we're gonna make that work yeah yeah all right. Wow. Okay. So this was this was okay. This was yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a fun one. It was definitely fun for mm-hmm. our purposes. For all right. sure. Okay. For sure. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna recommend a movie. This movie has nothing to do with this. This oh, is. Okay. It's just something I watched recently, and it's actually I'm gonna recommend two movies. Tonight. Oh my! You're coming at us. Okay. These two movies both have the same title. It's called Nightmare Alley. One of is these it movies, the same movie? One from like one of, French yeah. in 1942? One of these movies like was made in 19, to know. <laughs> one of these movies was made in 1947 and the other one okay. was made in 2021. Okay. So, Which yeah, one do you prefer? I kind of prefer the old one. Um, yeah. Only because I think the new one takes too much time to like explain the main character and his past and and the old one leaves it more ambiguous. And the other okay. thing is... And it's not like I didn't like the new one. The new one is 40 minutes longer than the old movie. And it kind oh. of tells the same story. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, it, I mean, they're both called? good. What was that? What's it called? Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley. Yeah. Okay. So you honestly cannot go wrong with either one. You want to watch the new okay. one? Go. You love Bradley That'd Cooper? Watch the new one. Oh, go for great. it. But uh, I think the old one is very, very good. And in my opinion, better. So, Jamie, did this did this movie spur any suggestions or I mean, other than watching Sheila E.'s latest music video? You must watch Lemon Cake. You must. <clears throat> she is literally singing about a lemon cake and how that got her to win her love. And she's got what, a yellow dress what? on and she's in a fancy <laughs> mansion. Yeah, please. Okay. You must watch the lemon cake. I mean, we oh. do it when, as soon as we're done. It's on I YouTube. Just, I just typed in <laughs> lemon cake. And surprisingly, pictures of lemon cakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, that's that is definitely a recommendation. But if you want a movie recommendation, uh, there's the there's the um, the documentary called Summer of Soul. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about the Harlem Cultural Festival in 1969. It was this music festival that took place the same year as Woodstock, but it was in Harlem and it was all these R and B and so are you watching, um, no, no, lemon no. cake? I see you smiling <laughs> and I was like, so are you sorry. excited about this movie? Are no, I'm watching lemon cake on mute. <laughs> listen, there are, there are a lot, there are a lot of results for Sheila E. Lemon cake. Oh, the first handful are clearly this music video. The next one, it says <laughs> Sheila E. Let's make a lemon cake, and it's her in her kitchen showing. I bet you how to she make also a lemon can cake. show you how to make one. Yes. Not only can she sing about it, but I mean, it's, it's twenty her minutes cake long, for all so I you know. can watch the music video of her making then, a, or to sing about a lemon cake, and then watch a twenty-minute video of her teaching <laughs> you how to make a lemon cake. This is amazing. I'm sorry, I totally derailed your. Suggestion. I love it. I love this is why it. My I don't like to look is, stuff up as we're doing. I, I could see you looking at. It. I was like, I don't. Does he? Is he that into this summer of soul? Mm-hmm. But um, I know. I know the lemon cake look when I see it. Yep, no, I had the same thing happen. Middle of this movie. That's why some of this stuff. I'm like, what's happening at Randall? I don't know. But lemon cake is a great song. 
Anyway, it's a great, Summer Soul is a great movie because it's all the performances. It's Mm -hmm. the footage from the festival. And they brought back the footage, and it's great because there's uh, Nina Simone performs, Gladys Knight, The Fifth Dimension, B.B. King. It's all these great acts. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, um, the, the footage even wasn't shown because Woodstock was the thing that year. So um, it's a really great those documentary. It's really hippies. well done. Those dirty, filthy hippies those stole hippies. their thunder. They really did. And yeah. it was all, it was a whole African-American, it was mm. wonderful. It was a whole black, I don't, what, I don't know. I'm bad with the PC stuff. I know that there are certain things that we need to say that's more appropriate. But It's okay. We're fine. I'm inappropriate. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best, okay? <laughs> We just talked about a movie with a bunch of fat boys in it. And yeah. We just said fat boys 300 times. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. All right. Yeah, I, I remember seeing, um, just like previews, that that was a thing that it's was fun. coming it's up. It's really I was, good. I didn't, I didn't catch it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Catch it. It's well, really good. good. Catch yeah. it. All right. Yeah. Well, everybody, um, that's kind of it, but we always talk about the movie that we're going to do next time. What's up next? So let's do that. This is a top-tier patron's choice. Oh. And this is kind of fun that we're doing this because last year, Christian recommended The Last Dragon. And this year, Christian's pick is Best of the Best. And... Jamie, let me read you the uh, synopsis of this. And I feel like I don't... Is I'm, Eric Roberts in this? Eric Roberts is totally <laughs> in this. I was going to say, it's not Jean-Claude Van Damme, but it says a team from the United States is going to compete against Korea in a Taekwondo tournament. Oh. The team consists of fighters from all over the country. Can they overcome that rivalry and work together to win? So this sounds like a lot of fun. And as long as Eric Roberts isn't murdering someone on a <laughs> sex bench that he built or whatever he did, I am all for it. All right. Best of the best coming up next. Best of the best. And that will be in two weeks. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, um, patrons, for continuing to support the show. We will talk to you again in two weeks. We'll see you then. For the bad boys you can see are our names. So don't. Put a kindness and respect to shame oh, oh. Treat us like you would want to be treated Put a kindness in you so make it be needed A lot of people take advantage of the dream Because they think we're another bunch of sucker MCs Took behind the back say I was a bull But the fat boys got a lot of pull oh. So Sneaker genius, we're over here trying to rehearse. I was gonna say utensils. What would they call them? Not Tools? Utensils. utensils? Tools? S- S- Equipment? Yep. Surgical things? At doctor's <laughs> offices? Oh. <laughs>